Climate change is a shift of average weather that lasts a few decades or more. As the climate changes, Colorado is losing its forest to bark beetles and fungus. Bark beetles include mountain pine beetles that attack two needle lodgepole pines. Western pine beetles attack ponderosa and coulter pines. In addition to boring into trees, the beetles kill by carrying a fatal blue staining fungus that causes wilt. Five needle white pines, such as the limber, white bark, southwestern, and bristle cone pines, are dying from another fungus, white pine blister rust. These trees live a long time on high, dry, rocky ridges. Colorado State University researchers say that it takes five days of temperatures of 30 below or lower to kill bark beetles. More beetles are surviving warmer winters. And the results are devastating. 1.5 million acres in Colorado have been killed by pine beetles in the past 12 years. That's 70% of Colorado's lodgepole pine population. As soil moisture decreases, trees are less able to fight bark beetles and fungus. Less rain means less vegetation, less wildlife. The dead trees can cause a massive fire as the dry wood provides good fire material. These fires can burn so hot that even lodgepole pine seed that need fire to be released are destroyed. The trees also hold the soil in place, allowing vegetation to grow on steep slopes, which prevents mud and rock slides. Some say you better look now, because they will be dead in three to five years. We called the USDA using the internet and found our way to Mr. Yurgert, who answered our questions by email and did a group call with all of us. We spoke with Ryan Bray with the Canadian Forest Services, too. Canada is having a problem with bark beetles as well. Current solutions include letting forest fires burn. Younger trees are less susceptible for being killed by beetles. Spraying pesticides, thinning trees, the average price of thinning one acre of forest in Summit County, Colorado is $2,000. Harvesting beetle kill for biofuel, the Department of Energy announced in February it would be pay $30 million for the construction of Colorado's first cellulose ethanol plant. Biologic controls, increasing the number of beetle predators, limited by expense of reproduction and release. We decided to work on finding an inexpensive way to spread seed, predatory insects, or predatory insect eggs over difficult-to-reach areas such as mountain slopes or areas with thick stands of trees. The delivery device needed to be small enough to be backpacked into wooded areas. We made a special tube for the rocket to hold and release the seed, but found the seed release better without the tube. The experiment. We settled on using a solid fuel rocket to carry predatory insect eggs, predatory insects, or seeds into the sky and disperse over a large area. Two launches used Tradicale, a wheat-rye hybrid. We chose this to simulate pine nuts. Four launches used the seed from mountain ash. While we could hear the try to kill hit the ground, we were unable to find enough of it to measure how far it spread. So we found the seed dispersion map from our Garmin GPS. We came to the conclusion that the rockets would be best where you can't drill in seeds. Examples include slopes, dense dead areas, and hard to reach areas. We also decided that a rocket is better than using an airplane because a rocket does not need to take off at an airport and it uses less fuel and releases less greenhouse gases. The advantage of not having to take off at an airport is that the rocket can be carried by the average hiker. Improvements could be made to our design. Such improvements are as follows. It could be quieter so that it does not scare away the animals, smaller flames so there is no fire risk, and finally a larger payload capacity and a charge delay so the rocket arcs over so it is pointed down and releases its payload out instead of into the rocket. Uh -huh.